Ok, like I mentioned before, como mencioné antes, tengo acá nada más y nada menos que a Mark, como lo había prometido. Uh, les voy a dar una pequeña referencia de, de Mark, ok. Eh, Mark ha sido el vocalista de Drive She Said y American Tears y The Touch y también sus discos solistas, ha hecho una carrera solista eh, aparte de las bandas que acabo de mencionar. El último disco que acaba de salir es este de American Tears. Vamos a hablar un poquito de Free Angel Express, pero vamos a hablar un poquito también acerca de su vida, qué está pasando. Está en Suecia en este momento, en Estocolmo. Y bueno, lo tenemos acá. Mark, bienvenido. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you too, brother. How is your... Oh, oh I'm going to be translating after Good. you answer, so be ready for that. I went to summer school for Spanish. I got a 64. I needed a 65. My teacher wouldn't give me that extra point. So I had to spend the summer going to, going to, you know, one hour on the bus to go to summer school to take Spanish. So really? I, underst I understand a little, but uh, yeah. Wow, that, that's good. I, Maybe we, you can, whatever you can say in Spanish, it was, you, will be, you will be welcome because... Gracias, you know. I, yeah. I, should, I should have been surfing because I live near the water and I was a surfer, so... But I couldn't surf that summer too much because I was in summer school. Ah, you missed that. <laughs> bueno, nos, que, nos contaba Mar que está estudiando español, que sabe algunas palabras, que entiende más de lo que habla. Y le dije que, bueno, si dice algo en español, es siempre bienvenido, no importa. It doesn't matter the spelling. Uh, people really appreciate when you are trying to talk in, into... Gracias. Like yeah. So, vamos a enfocarnos en este disco, ¿ok? El último disco de American, ¿ok? American Tears. Y, um, y vamos a, a desglosar un poquito lo que es... Esta, esta, este nuevo compacto que tengo acá que me acaba de llegar justo ayer así que vino en perfecta eh, situación um, we're gonna talk about this uh, for a while um, how was the response so far from Free Angel Express it's been very good I'm very very happy because it's it's different music it's not normal It's not formula, and there's kind of no safety net. So um, you're kind of taking chances and trying to come up with stuff. And um, I'm just so happy that people don't think it sucks. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. Uh, I'm going to translate a little bit. Le pregunté acerca de la respuesta hasta ahora y ha sido muy buena. Eh, la gente ha respondido bastante positivo y está contento de que, por suerte, para la gente no le, no le haya disgustado, eh, no haya apestado, dijo en, en, en inglés. Um, I've seen how, the, do you, how, how do you say sucks in, in Spanish? Apesta. Ajá. It, hopefully Apesta. It, doesn't, it doesn't suck. Okay. Yeah, it comes from uh, pest. You know, oh, pest. okay. Yeah. Apesta. Okay. Now you can relate both uh, words. You know? <laughs> <laughs> eh, me preguntó, bueno, ¿cómo se decía apestar en inglés? Well, que es, uh, sucks. Eh, I've seen the, the Sledgehammer video, which mm -hmm. was amazing. Tell me about the production. Le estoy preguntando de, del video Sledgehammer, que está impresionante. Véanlo, por favor. Lo estamos pasando seguramente ahora. Tell me about, about that. Thank you. Well... You know, because of the virus, uh, our bass players in Texas, our drummer Alex Landenberg is in Germany, and I'm in Stockholm. So, you know, what everybody is doing these days, I do my video in this little studio, and we have a very good editor who edits together and tries to make it, make it exciting. It's not as much fun as being in the studio together you don't feel the energy of, and the friendship and the camaraderie of, you know, of playing it together, but it's kind of the best you can do now. Yeah. I'll let you, I'll let you translate and <laughs> a lot to remember. 
Bueno, eh, nos comentaba que eh, todo esto ha, ha, hecho, ha sido hecho de manera remota, él lo, lo ha hecho, mostró un poquito atrás lo que es su estudio, el bajista está en Texas y el baterista está en Alemania, entonces no es lo mismo trabajar de manera conjunta en el mismo lugar y hacerlo todo con cierta camaradería, sino que bueno, ha sido todo de manera remota, pero aún así bueno, han podido sacar este, este excelente video Uh, what about the, the production of the album? Le voy a preguntar acerca de la producción del álbum. How was uh, producing the album? It was before COVID, during COVID? Both. Both. Uh, fortunately, Alex was able to come to New York um, right before it hit. So we, we spent 10 days, you know, fixing up the drums. Um, but most of it is, is done before and a, a couple of things... I guess over the summer, uh, but it, it's, it was kind of, you know, mixed here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're kind of waiting for people to, you know, finish other projects so that the mastering guy could find time to, to work on it. And then the label took about three months. They didn't want to release it during the summer. So we waited till October. Um, so it's, it's been actually finished. I guess it was finished in May. Of, okay. Uh, yeah. So it's it's been done for a while. Well, I mean, we have most of the next record done as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, since we recorded Hardcore in 2017 and then White Flags um, in 2018, and it's like been one long album. It just has never stopped um, because... Uh, It's, it's easier to record now than it used to be. You don't have to wait for a studio, a great studio. You can do it in your Mac and you can do it yourself. Um, I have a yeah. you know, very, very good microphone here. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> so it's possible to do things, whereas in the old days, you'd have to wait for a great studio to get a yeah. right drum sound. So you kind of can do it if you wake up in the morning with an idea, as I do a lot or have a dream, boom, you go in there and you try to put it down and, and kind of get it done while it's hot, you know, while it's fresh. Right, right. Bueno, me le preguntaba acerca de la producción, como les comenté, la producción fue, eh, arrancó previo el, el encierro, eh, estuvieron en Nueva York trabajando por 10 días con el, con el resto de la banda y pudieron por lo menos dejar varias partes de, por ejemplo, la batería eh, bien grabada y todo. Y después, bueno, tuvieron que esperar el tema de la producción, el tema de la, de la masterización y todo, que eh, ya no, no los... Eh, era, son, son actividades que ellos no, no se encargaban y, bueno, tenían que esperar a que se, se hiciera. Parte de esto fue eh, después de cuando ya fue el encierro. Y lo que comentaba también es que lo bueno de trabajar en un estudio desde casa, no tener que esperar a ir a grabar a un estudio, es que uno puede hacer las cosas frescas. Uno tiene ideas y, y esas ideas se pueden plasmar de manera directa e inmediata grabándolas. Y no tiene que uno que esperar a ir a un estudio para, para grabarlas. <coughs> Sorry, it's, it's the COVID. Um, you, you, no, I'm, jo you, I'm joking. Yeah, you have a very good memory. Oh, actually, uh, I, I disagree. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> it's really, well, you're it's not, really... You're not taking notes, so yeah. It's... I know, uh, it's really, honestly, people think that my work right now is, is just, you know, enjoy. I, I'm not enjoying that much. I enjoy when I, I watch the, the interviews after which I readily do, uh, because right now it's, it's really, uh, I have to be very focused on what you said. Yeah. Thinking, uh, actually, it, it, work, it doesn't work with, for the dynamic, because I need to remember what I'm going to say, what you said, and right. it stop a little bit of the dynamic of the conversation, but it, it works for people that are, you know, listening right now. You It's know? good. I, It's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. 
Uh, I could keep, I could keep going and going, but I'll I, I stop myself. So thank you. And and when once I finish yeah. translating, you can also continue if you have to say something else. Okay. I, I forgot the question. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Bueno, me decía que está bueno, eh, le gusta cómo, cómo puedo traducir, le digo que no estoy de acuerdo porque realmente eh, es bastante difícil estar pendiente de lo que va a decir, pendiente de lo que voy a preguntar, corta un poco la dinámica de la, de la, de, de la conversación, pero aún así, bueno, es un trabajo difícil. Eh, y se olvidó de la pregunta, we were talking about the production of the, of the yeah. album. Uh, how did you come up with the name Free Angel Express? ¿Cómo se te ocurrió el nombre del disco? Well, like I say, I, sometimes in a dream or in the, you know in the early morning we think of words and ideas, and um, these just these words just floated into me. I, I like the idea of free, freedom. Mm -hmm. Angel was spiritual, and express is was expression. Oh, and okay. I, I, I just like the way that the picture that that kind of painted. I didn't know what it meant. And then uh, I wrote the song, which is instrumental, Free Angel Express. Mm -hmm. But then I, I needed to come up with an idea for the album cover. This is about three months later. And I'm looking through the lyrics and the titles, and it hit me that an express is a train. I, I never, I didn't really, you know, you talk about how lyrics, you don't know what they mean. And all of a sudden, a year later, a month later, 10 years later, you go, oh, that's what that meant. So it hit me that um, Free Angel Express could also be the train. And Stan Decker, the amazing artist, uh, took a sketch that I had. It looked like a four-year-old drawing and he made that amazing artwork. So- It was, yeah, who, I, lo I, I love the artwork. I, 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 yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I just know it had a feeling a feeling that I wanted, you know. Right. Bueno, le pregunté un poquito del, del nombre y, y todo ese juego de palabras, esa combinación de palabras estaba en la, en la mente, en la cabeza de, de Mark. Eh, empezó primero con el tema de free, de libre. Eh, la parte de ángel vendría a ser un poco la parte espiritual del nombre. Y Express, eh, si bien eh, está... Eh, en la tapa está con, con un tren, ¿no? Eh, que relaciona un poquito la parte de... A ver, en la parte eh, de, de gráfica, no me salía la palabra, está representado con un tren, pero Express también es un poco... Eh, el, eh, la, de, de, viene de la parte de expresarse, pero bueno, también acá es una manera de comunicación porque el tren representa un poco... El tema de, de comunicación. I, I think the, the, the train express communication because it's a way of communication from one yeah. point to the another, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I was. And, and, yeah. and in the little sketch, I, I don't know, it's around somewhere. It's like rocks. And I wanted every car to make, maybe represent a song. So one of the cars is glowing, one of the cars is on fire because we have the song set it on fire. Love, you know, so um, it kind of was psychedelic because I'm, you know, from the 70s. And the, so I, I'm when there was LPs, you know, mm -hmm. the, people used to really get into the album covers. N maybe yeah. not so much, not so much anymore, but I love to get deep into it so you could, mm. you know, look at it and oh, make discoveries and what's that and what's that. So. But then again, in those days, people used to smoke pot, not me, but so, um, <laughs> you know. People can see you, can look at your eyes, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, but, um, you know, it was a diff, it's really just that kind of thinking of those days when the big, it was a big work of art and you could really right. see it, so, yeah. Estábamos hablando un poquito del arte, de, de, de él estaba hablando un poquito de, de cómo él le gustó, en, en, los, en los 70 y en el pasado la gente realmente disfrutaba de, de, del trabajo artístico de la portada. 
y hoy en día ya no tanto, lo cual no me representa a mí, porque a mí yo disfruto, yo veo esto, por ejemplo, I'm, I, I'm, I'm translating, but also talking about this, you know. Yeah. Yo veo, veo esta portada y, y me parece fantástico la combinación de colores, eh, el tren viniendo, el fuego, todo eso a mí me parece, eh, disfruto, disfruto de, de, del arte de trabajo de, de muchos discos y este disco tiene un muy buen arte de trabajo. Me dijo que lo hizo una persona... Eh, You mentioned about who, who did the artwork? Stan Decker. Stan, Stan Decker. Stan, Stan's going to love this. He's French. He's going to love this interview because we're talking about him the whole time. It's great. <laughs> okay, Stan, muy bueno. Muy bueno. Stan, yeah, muy bueno. Yeah, yeah. Y, mm -hmm. y bueno, estábamos compartiendo eso. Lo que me olvidé de traducir lo pueden ver después en, en, en el video en YouTube. Um, whatever I forget to translate is going to be on, on YouTube afterwards, you know, the, the, the okay. show airs live. Okay. Uh, le voy a preguntar cómo, cómo apareció Barry Sparks en el disco. Uh, tell me Barry Sparks' involvement uh, on the album. One more time? Barry? Barry? Bar Bar yeah. yeah. Barry played on Sledgehammer. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to do more. You know, he was working on Michael Schenker and some other stuff. So, Yeah. Um, okay. That's what he had time. That's what he had time to do, and it was. It's great because he, he's. The thing about American Tears, it's always been about musicianship. I'm. You know, we had three records in the '70s, and it's always about uh, a lot of playing and solos and good musicianship. So I was very, very happy to have Alex and Barry on this as well. Um, and you know, there, there's no guitars, so we're doing Hammond organ and mellotrons and clavinet and synthesizers and a lot of the vintage keyboards mm -hmm. that, used, that used to be around in those days. But now with computers, you can have access to them a lot easier and a lot more sounds. I mean, you can yeah. really access a variety of sounds. Yeah. It's a keyboard is really like 30 instruments. You know, you could have yeah. a string section or a choir. On one song called Tusk, Blood on the Ivory, we have elephant sounds. It, it's kind of a, a protest against the way they're killing these beautiful elephants and, you know, and other beautiful animals. So I access some elephant sounds and gunshots and um, it, oh. it's an instrumental, but... Um, Yeah, you know, put that together. So really, and again, if you're not going to a chorus or if you're not going according to formula, you have to think of something to create a moment that's going to excite you or excite hopefully the listener, but mostly excite me because if it doesn't excite me, it's not going to excite anybody probably. Um, so I'm creating these tapestries of organ with a, a string over it or a choir or some cool synth sound, even sometimes dancey sounds. I mean, there's some great stuff that they use in, in dance music that you can put into this stuff very well. And there's some, I love Hans Zimmer and like the Batman movies and, and the bottom that they get in some of these great, you know, blockbuster movies so i was trying to kind of take the music a little bit further sonically you know in the in the 60s and 70s it was like here i'm going here but now it's it's here you know you can get much more bottom you can get much more high end the spectrum especially on these beautiful speakers i have the spectrum is bigger so it's more like a body massage It hits you in the, in the knees. It hits you in the chest. So if you listen to songs like, um, well, Free Angel Express, but also Fire Down Below on the White Flags album, it just shakes the floor. There's so much bottom on that. We were listening to, uh, actually, we were listening to Batman. <laughs> It's like, and I kept saying to the end, to the, uh, I, I mixed it, but I was kept saying to the mastering guys, like, more bottom, more bottom. But it, don't bottom. you think it's a risky decision to use that many uh, yeah. keyboards nowadays? 
Fuck risk. Ah. <laughs> what? Fuck that. No. I just, don't. just asking. Actually, yeah, yeah. Just in case, you know. I mean, uh, uh, well, what's going to happen? What's yeah. going to happen? What yeah. can happen? Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I love it. I love the Hammond. I love the Melotron. I, I love. I personally. Yeah, uh, I just hear, I just listened to the 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 video, the video clip only, the, the that song, Sledgehammer. Oh, well, uh, that's so mostly far. organ. That's mostly organ. I I, yeah. I love I love uh, keyboards. You know, actually, yeah. I would recommend uh, if you ever need. I know you play keyboards, and if you ever have some fellow uh, keyboardists on the next album, I would recommend Every Ragnio and Michael T. Rose. These two guys. Doing something like like a some kind of a keyboard uh, yeah. war between them, that would yeah. be probably a, a good thing for those that really enjoy the keyboard work. Well, because you know, um, you know the band Angel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Michael, Charlie, Michael play Michael play on that one, that band. Charlie Calv played on um, a song on the record "Shadows yeah. Ache and Karma." Really? Yeah, Charlie we had a li we had a little duel, Charlie and I. And I mean, so I love that idea, but we want somebody famous. We want Rick Wakeman. <laughs> Cause I mean, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty good. You know, we're, we know how to play. So it's not about playing. There's another guy named Matt Gilyari who's fucking amazing. But, um, you know, we need somebody famous to bring, a, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, because you I hear you. Keyboards, right? That's all I play is keyboards. Yeah, yeah. Besides um, singing, but I, I love collaborating though. I, I love working with with these guys. I'm actually doing another record now. The band is called Keys. 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 It's got three keyboard players in it. Wow. And yeah, so it's exactly what you're talking about. So pl please email me those guys' names because yeah. we're trying. We're trying to get, you know, cameo appearances and maybe a little bit on American Tears too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I, they are a friend of mine and uh, they play with Let's many, many. Yeah. But yeah. check out, check out Shadows Aching Karma with Charlie because it's, it kicks ass. Okay, I will double check. Uh, I will see if, what I can translate from the Barry Spark question to now. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. Can I do that? It's yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Ok, así que estábamos hablando un poquito. Le pregunté acerca de cómo ha has participado, ha sido incluido Barry Spark. Eh, él tocó con Michael Schenker y con Dokken, entre otras, otras cosas. Y bueno, ya ni me acuerdo lo que dijo, pero supongo que eh, ha sido fantástico trabajar con Barry. Todo lo que ha aportado, ha participado del video de Slate Hammer. Y después nos pusimos a hablar un poco del sonido, porque obviamente Mark toca teclados, es, él es tecladista y también cantante, pero básicamente él lo que ha más aportado en, en sus carreras es el tema de los teclados. Entonces eh, estuvo hablando de cómo se puede usar eh, hoy en día con la tecnología tantos sonidos que antes por ahí era más difícil de grabar y hoy en día con la tecnología se puede hacer un montón de cosas y como él ha tratado de expandir un poco el, 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 el sonido, los sonidos y eh, en el disco de, de American Tears eh, y también nos pusimos a hablar un poquito del tema de, 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 de cómo uso el melotron y, y los teclados entonces ahí le dije, mira, tengo un par de conocidos, un par de amigos que tocan teclados eh, y los nombres como Eric y, y Michael y él le dijo, sí, sí, está buenísimo también me gustaría traer a alguien con un gran nombre como Rick Wakeman entonces bueno, ahí es donde me reí y, y él está haciendo un proyecto eh, tal vez es posible que él pudiera hablar con ellos me dijo que le pase la información y, y de repente ya sea ponerlos para American T eh, Tears o para el otro proyecto que ahora le voy a preguntar de vuelta de qué se trata the other project that you were doing with three keyboards the name is keys keys yeah just keys uh, keys llaves keys, keys. Oh, keyboards, keys. keys. Got it. Yeah, so <laughs> because keys, yeah, teclados, okay? In Spanish, the, the, teclados. 
the album cover might be a key and a lock. I, I don't know, but it's about keys. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be in. Yeah. That would be awesome. And who's involved already besides you? Well, um, Alex on drums, Alex Landenberg. Alex you know, a band, a band, an amazing band, Syra. Uh, Syra. Jake, Jake E., who's to me one of the best singers in the world. Jake Lee. No, Jake E. I know, I know, I know. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he's Swedish. And um, Charlie's in the band. Charlie Cal from Angel. Okay. Oh, yeah. Charlie. And, okay. and we're figuring out our third keyboard player right okay. now. Okay. Okay. Well, and, 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 and we might have cameo appearances like you're suggesting. You know, we're going to have yeah. people do solos. It's probably six. I mean, the album's kind of done, but it's not sung yet. And it's probably six months away from being done, but yeah. Oh, okay. So it's in the process. Ok, yeah. uh, el proyecto se llama Kiss, teclados, eh, la idea es traer, cameo sería eh, 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 que aparezcan personas como invitados, eh, va a aparecer, va a estar eh, el tecladista de Angel, Chris, y mencionó la otra persona también, y va a estar en batería quien está hoy en American Express, eh, American Tears, perdón, y, y bueno, es un proyecto donde tal vez en la portada aparezca un teclado, lógicamente Mark va a estar haciendo la mayoría de las cosas eh, y le voy a preguntar eh, cómo, cómo ha, sido, ha sido incluido también de la banda, de su banda Touch eh, Doe Howard y how has involved uh, having Doe Howard involved in, from Touch, you know, in this album It was great you know, um, Touch has just finished another record as well which we're mixing uh, we have 14 songs now So I've been, I've been talking to Doug and working with Doug for two years, maybe, you know, for mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're in touch. He's a good, very good friend, obviously. So, um, yeah, it was great. Doug's awesome. Okay. Y bueno, But, eh, hace dos años que viene hablando con, Todd, eh, con Doug. Eh, de hecho, están trabajando en un nuevo disco. De, you're working on a new Touch album, you said, right? It's finished. We're, we're mixing it. It's, a, oh. it's, a, it's the same guys. It's Craig. It's the original band. Original That was band. a Donington. Okay. And um, we actually just posted something on YouTube called uh, Tomorrow Never Comes. Uh, it's a teaser. Okay. So Google, Google uh, Tomorrow Never Comes by Touch. Touch. And you'll hear uh, our first song. Okay. Off, off this record. And um, everyone's playing and singing better than ever. Craig is, you know, has not lost his voice. He's singing one, you know, beautifully. Um, so yeah, we did another record. Nice. Okay, están en la en el, la mezcla del nuevo disco de Touch, que es una buena noticia. Banda original. Eh, ya tienen un, un algo ahí eh, sacado en, en los medios eh, sociales, así que pueden chequear Touch. And the name of the song is Tomorrow Never Comes. Tomorrow Never Comes. Mañana no viene. Tomorrow Never Comes ponen Touch en Google y lo pueden encontrar y van a ver un poquito lo que es el anticipo de lo que va a venir de, de Touch. Le estaba preguntando, lógicamente, cómo, estaba, cómo había sido involucrado eh, Dog y bueno, es, fue fantástico. Como dije recién, ya hace rato que vienen eh, charlando y bueno, encima nos tiró esa nueva noticia. Um, I know you play with Benny, Benny Mordón. So, mm -hmm. any, any good memory since he passed away this Very year. Yeah. Le estoy preguntando de que acaba yeah, de morir yeah. Benny Mardones hace muy poquito y él trabajó con él. Que nos diga un poquito de Benny. All yours. Yeah, Benny was a, um, a good friend, a great singer. I remember my head hurt when we would write because I would laugh for three days. He was the funniest guy. And I just remember my jaws would hurt. Really? When I would work with Benny, <laughs> just, <laughs> my head would hurt from, you know, and of course we wrote a lot of stuff. Um, and then Paul Rogers recorded a song that we wrote called For a Little Ride. Yep. So we were very fortunate. But I have, I have fond memories of Benny. He, he, was, he was larger than life. Right. Benny right. was larger than life. 
Bueno, eh, él comentó de que, eh, bueno, obviamente trabajó con Benny Mardons, que, que era una persona muy, muy graciosa. Eh, él se acuerda grabando con Benny y, y no paraba de reírse. Le dolía la mandíbula, la, los pómulos de tanto, de tanto reírse porque Benny, Benny era una persona realmente muy, muy graciosa, muy divertida. Y bueno, desapareció, fue una lástima. Benny era lejos uno, un, un excelente vocalista y, y músico y bueno, esas son las memorias, los recuerdos que tiene Marga acerca de Benny y le voy a preguntar cómo conoció a, a, a Michael Bolton How did you meet Michael Bolton? Ah, yeah Well, Nueva York in those days th there's nothing like what New York was then it was um, a place where you can hang out there's a place called the China Club the China and Club. another and another called Nirvana. And every Thursday there would be a jam at Nirvana and almost every night at the China Club, everybody was there. It could be Mick Jagger or David Bowie. Wow. Or, or Michael Bolton. You know, Michael didn't have his deal yet, but Bob Dylan, everybody was would hang out at the China Club. And so Um, all you had to do was go out to the China Club and, you know, hang out and get a drink and you'd see friends and Danger Danger was there and Diving for Pearls and... Wow. Was well, oh, in, in the 80s, ladies, 80s. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, 70s. 70s. 70s and 80s. Okay, okay. Yeah, 70s, yeah. Um, so, uh, I also knew Louis Levin who managed Michael. And Lewis gave me a call because he knew about touch. And he asked me if I wanted to write with Michael. And uh, I met Michael at the China Club and we got, you know, we hung, hung out. We became very, very good friends. I also met Aldo Nova there. Aldo, we, you know, and I wrote a lot of stuff as well. Um, and uh, that's how we met. And we wrote Fool's Game like two days later or something. And then... You know, we worked on Everybody's Crazy record and all that stuff as well. And then we wrote I Found Someone for Cher. So um, yeah. it, it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful relationship. But um, there's nothing like that kind of hang anymore that I know anywhere in the world, really. Yeah. It's a yeah. shame because it was such a, it was such a, a tight knit, you know, unit and so much fun. To hang. Yeah. And uh, the name of the bar, Nirvana, the other one is? China Club. China Club. Eh, bueno, le pregunté cómo lo conoció a Michael Bolton y era que en, lo, en New York, en los 70, 80, eh, habían dos, dos bares donde tocaban músicos, podía ir Bowie, Dylan, aparecía, así que todos estaban prácticamente viviendo ya. Y Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Keith eh, Richards. Keith Richards. Everybody. <laughs> Amazing. Y, yeah. y, y Mark solía ir a esos, a eso, iban a tocar ahí, a tomar algo, a tocar. Eh, y bueno, ahí fue como prácticamente conoció, conocía al manager de Michael Bolton y fui, así fue como se relacionó con, con Michael en aquellos momentos. Eh, era, era lugares donde todas las semanas siempre caía alguien famoso y, y bueno, básicamente fue un poquito como... Eh, conoció eh, como tuvo contacto y terminó tocando con Michael Bolton, después terminó tocando con Cher y ha tocado con un montón con Paul Rogers eh, Mark ha estado realmente bien ocupado en los 80 y también los 90 lógicamente y, y últimamente con estos discos que está haciendo um, Last question about uh, how was uh, Your time with the uh, drive, she said. You you play so many albums. Great. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. I have I have here drive, she said, and um, my wills. Okay. Yeah. You gotta sign this. Okay. I gotta send you this so you can autograph this because I would like to have that. You know. Also, I have your solo album from Another Life that you say here. Actually, I realized that you use sort of a uh, the drive, she said, uh, sort of a. Uh, Artwork here, right? No. Let me double check. <laughs> That's oh, a mantra. Yeah, yeah, I know it's a mantra. I, I thought it was sort of uh, yeah, the circle here. We, we, we like, 
We like circles. You like circles, ok. We like, we like steering wheels. <laughs> so, le preguntaba un poquito de la, sus épocas en Drive She Said. Uh, well, Alfred, you know, my brother, my you know, my close friend, uh, we did six records. Amazing singer, amazing guitarist, amazing. He played keyboards better than me. He played bass, he played drums. Uh, you know, he passed away. Um, yeah, he, he um, couple, three years ago, he died. So I, I miss him dearly. Uh, so that was where great times. And I have great memories of Al. And he was just a wonderful human being and a sweet guy and just uh, terrible. Yeah. Well, eh, un poquito recordando a Al, el vocalista de Drive She Say, que murió hace como tres años. El... Mar dice que tocaba mejor los teclados que el mismo, excelente vocalista, fue, fueron seis discos que grabaron juntos y fueron excelentes momentos que han pasado en, en, durante la, la etapa de Drive She Said. Lamentablemente la banda ya no creo que pueda volver a estar sin, sin Al en, en voces, pero bueno, fue, fueron buenos momentos que ha tenido en esa etapa. Imagínense... Mark ha estado en Drive She, Drive She Said, Touch y American Tears. Así que en cada banda que está Mark es increíble. Every, every band you are, you, you, you are involved is, is amazing, man. Yes, <laughs> you, you, you. You, you must be a, a sort of a, a, a Einstein of the music because everything is amazing. I'm obsessed and, <laughs> and it's my life. I mean, it's, it's my life. You know, music is, I, I, it's my language. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I wake up in the morning and I have a melody in my head and I feel like it's coming from another place. Maybe, maybe someone is giving it to me. Maybe it's a gift. And I feel like I must do something with it. Otherwise I'm disrespecting wherever it's coming from. Right. And plus it's fucking fun. I mean, I, I, it, you know, I love it. it. It's, it's an adrenaline rush. You know, it's like some people mm. race motorcycles or something. I don't know. Right, right. Um, music is my rush. So. <laughs> Le decía que todo lo que hace él es fantástico. He estado en impresionantes bandas como Drive. She, drive. She said, no sé por qué. I don't know why I'm having issues with say Drive right now. It's something with the tongue. Drive, She Said, Touch y American Tears, cada banda que él está es impresionante. Y él dice, bueno, es, es un estilo de vida, es lo que hago por divertirme, aparte de que es divertido, es realmente a lo que me dedico, es lo, donde pongo toda mi pasión, así que, lógicamente, cada, aparte es un obsesivo de, 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 de lo que es la música, lo que es la composición, entonces, claro, lógicamente las cosas van a salir eh, como se esperan, de manera bien. ¿Cómo la gente te puede ubicar? How people can reach you? Uh, well, the record's on Deco Entertainment. So just, you know, Google Deco. Um, they have a smart SRL. What is it? It's smarturl.it slash Free Angel Express. Okay. All about, all about the record. Uh, my phone number is 917. <laughs> <laughs> and... and um, My friend Fabio Devani is going to, uh, who's from uh, Chile, who's, he's going to interpret what you said. So I'll find out if what you oh, translated what? is accurate. Oh, so awesome. Fabi Fabio. Yeah. Fabio, ayúdanos. Yeah, gracias. <laughs> Entonces la gente lo puede ubicar en, eh, el disco sale, salió por Deco, que es una, una distribuidora. Está, está por ahí. Um, Social media, I assume you are on social media. Do you? Yeah, Facebook. Facebook. If you put in American Tears, Free Angel American Express, Tears. Every, everything's going to show up. Yeah. Do you take the time? Te, te tomas el tiempo responder? Do you take the time to answer something or do you have someone else? Sure, I'll answer. Yeah. Are you answer? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Así que le, si le escriben, Mark responde. Uh, yeah. Okay. Tell me about Flesh and Blood, please. Um. Years ago, I did a record with Al Petrelli from Trans Siberian and mm -hmm. um, and Danny Vaughn from Taiketo. Yeah. And and uh, George, George, yeah, yeah. Chuck Bonfante from Soraya and and uh, 
a very bluesy, a bluesy slide guitar, kind of sleazy rock, hard rock record. And we just got a reissue and Danny and I just wrote two new bonus tracks for it, which wow. it'll, be out, it'll be out in January. So we next got to- year, Next year. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's coming up. So Danny and I got to work together. It was great seeing those guys again and talking to them. So um, we did another sleazy, bluesy kind of hard rock song. And that'll be out um, in January. Oh, that's cool. Bueno, yeah, fun. Le pregunté de, de Flesh and Blood, una, un proyecto que hizo con Al Pitrelli y Danny Bond. Al Pitrelli de Sabotage, Trans Siberian Orchestra y Danny Bond de Tiqueto, eh, Tequero. Y bueno, acá, van a sacar el año que viene, en principios del año que viene, eh, el, van a reeditar el disco que sacaron con dos temas nuevos. Y bueno, han estado en combinación con, con Danny y, y entre Mark y Danny. Eh, han grabado esos nuevos temas que están buenísimos, bien hard rock, bien blusero, así que estén preparados porque va a estar saliendo este disco muy pronto con dos temas nuevos, el, nuevo, el viejo disco remasterizado y todo con sonido nuevo y dos temas encima extra, así que I want that one too, ok? Yeah, man. <laughs> We're gonna end the whatever you want to say to end the conversation. I just want to thank everybody for listening, really, because um, this was created kind of in a vacuum. I didn't know if anybody would respond. You know, there's no guitars. The songs are different. Um, so I'm just very gratified uh, that people are digging it and giving me permission to do more. Mm. because when I get more confident, I'll just keep fucking going, you know? So, so that it's wonderful. Um, and, and I thank everybody for that. Bueno, quiero agradecer a todos por, por, eh, por apoyarme con este proyecto que encima ahí comenta que no tiene guitarras, es todo teclado, si es algo bastante eh, diferente. Eh, de hecho, le había preguntado si no era un poco arriesgado el hecho de eso tocar solo con teclados y él dijo que, que eh, no, no lo es eh, y que no le importa en definitiva. Así que eso fue básicamente lo que dijo, esa fue la entrevista para todos ustedes, querida gente. Mark, don't hang out because we're going to do the TV spot, ok? Yeah. And gracias, yeah. gracias por estar. This was gracias. a lot of fun. It was, and I learned yeah. a lot of Spanish, I think. It was good. <laughs> That's gracias. Awesome. Gracias, Thank you. gracias.